Hello, I'm Sue Trangmar and you may know me through my company which is Daisy Chain Designs. Um, I'm very, very lucky because uh, not only is Gail Pemberthy a very good friend of mine, but she's also a fantastic designer. And a lot of these things you probably would have noticed and seen and admired and hopefully bought when you've seen me at the shows that I've uh, done recently. So without further ado, this is Gail. And Gail, thank you so much for letting me sell your patterns. I can't tell you how popular they are. People absolutely love them, but they're always interested to know where your ideas come from. So maybe you'd just like to sort of introduce yourself and just tell me a little bit about, you know, where you get your ideas, particularly for the hedgehogs. They are fantastic. Yeah, thank you, Sue. Um, it's really difficult. They just, it just spring, things just spring into my mind. And then once I've I, I like the challenge of trying to make things and when I first thought I'd make a hedgehog I like the challenge to see how I could make the spikes and that so I started off with these hedgehogs here which are all made out of fabric and then as I enjoyed making these I then went on to continue with this time making them in felt and that which is good fun because you've got nice edges with felt and you haven't got to worry about um, any fraying. It's a great product, that. yes. Yeah. It's always something I think, particularly felt's very good for people that haven't maybe had a whole lot of sewing experience and a little bit unfamiliar with fabric because of course the beauty with the felt is it doesn't fray. Exactly. And, and I'm, I tend to be one of these people that once I've found a little technique that I like, I just, I get so enthused, I just want to make everything then, which then took me yes. on to making the sunflower cushions and that. And because everybody hasn't got big enough homes to cope with everything, I then went on to make the little sunflower pin cushion with the little ladybird pins. And the leaves then will hold your pins and the other side, your scissors and your pins and of course it wouldn't be complete the magic, bit. <laughs> the magic bit without a little tape measure there. If I pull that for you shall we? Yeah. This is what I always do to people at shows and they absolutely love it. It's like a little <laughs> extra and it's yeah. just so sweet isn't it? And I think yes. what people really do love about your work uh, particularly when you know they're admiring your work on my stand is the detail that you go to, the level of sort of the, uh, sort of interest and intrigue in there. For example, this little house here, if I just um, move it to here so we can see it. It's absolutely beautiful. On the front, you've got the little home and at the side, you've got the houses. The back's the little washing line. And then again, the beauty of this little project is the roof flaps just lift up so you've got space for your scissors on this side and space for your pins oh, yeah. and, and I ran out of that. space with this one so I had to make a little <laughs> piece to go along with it so you've got a little garden shed this time so you can stick your your pins in there and again because I enjoyed making that so much I went on to make the other little house that's down here and this has got a little garden that holds your scissors and pins and this one's got a little magic flap around the mm -hmm. side that opens up and then you can keep your pins in there. I just love making little little yes. trinkety things and, um, and I get a lot of enjoyment out of making them. And I'm so lucky that you then <laughs> go out and share them with the whole country. Well, you know, it is a joy. And I think the look on people's faces, I think, you know, when they come to the stand, it's the enjoyment. And I think it's the fact that they are very achievable. You know, when you're embarking on a quilt or a large project, you know, you're committing to several months of your life, aren't you, making yeah. something like that. Whereas these little projects, you know, you're not going to probably make them overnight, but they're not... A, a lifetime's work no, no. Um, but I have to tell you Gail I've just come back from doing the sewing for pleasure show and without doubt the star of the show was the toadstool house it's absolutely adorable and I think what people just enjoy so much is all the little detail on there so I sort of just turn it around I'll just move the little needle case out of the way but you've got your gnome buttons on there and the little house and all the little beads and then of course the piece de resistance is that the lid lifts off 
and you've got a little hidden box and oh and I it's just adorable Thank and then you. you've got your little tiny one here which uh, which is for your scissors and then you've got your little pin cushion in fact a lot of people didn't realize they got all three projects on the pattern yeah. so we had great fun telling them they were going I'd, to I'd like to, to make things I like, I like people to have like a couple of things in their patterns so if they don't want to embark on making the whole project they could just make the little pin cushion or just make the box yeah. and that and um and and like you said they're good fillers in between yeah. making the quilt because sometimes it can take us months to make a quilt Absolutely. and um and it's really nice to have a little something and i'm quite happy as well with my patterns for people to go on and make them for faiths or for um charities or if they want to make them for their friends and that. And I think a lot of these I've made for my sewing friends yeah. and that. And um, they're quite, uh, quite nice little little in-between projects. That's right, if they can bear to give them up, which I think a lot of ladies start off by thinking, <laughs> I'll make them for a friend. And then yeah. the reality is by the time it's made, they're yeah. like, no, I'm keeping that. I'll make another one. Yeah. Well, I, I've got a booty, haven't I? I get to make all these <laughs> lovely things and then just give them to you. <laughs> you so um, otherwise I'd run out of space at home, I think. Oh, bless you. I wanted also just to talk to you about the draft excluder as well, because that was just a very clever idea from taking the basic hedgehog design. I must also just show everybody at home as well. Well, but it is lovely this little I will show people at the shows you've got your little hedgehog on the front and then you turn him round and there's the little babies on the back I mean how sweet are they and that yeah. is usually the star of the show is to have the little detail on the back um, the and the draft excluder is also lovely and again very achievable <coughs> and there's a lot of ladies coming to the stand I've noticed that you know that are just starting off doing sewing and patchwork and quilting and they are slightly nervous to commit to spending a lot of money on a big project yeah but because I offer these as a kit you know a lot of people are happy to have a go because they know they can achieve it and get the results that they want which is also really nice yeah. so well done on that um, would you just also talk about the Christmas wreaths because they are also extremely popular and again a very lovely idea yeah this has worked out quite well again I've taken the idea of the felt and that and then brought it into Christmas so I, I believe that you kit these. I do, you? yes. So you can have a little small one in a kit or the big one. Yes. And there's some others down at the front yeah, there. One that's, one that's naked at the moment because I haven't decorated <laughs> haven't it. haven't decided what you're going to put yeah. on that one. But, the, but they're good fun so that um, you can decorate them. in any, You can either follow the pattern and decorate them the way that I have. Or you can just use all your own embellishments mm. and that because as far as I'm concerned you can never over embellish anything I love a button and a bead <laughs> and nothing pleases me more than sewing on little embellishments and, and that's what people love I think again it's the, the detail that just finishes it off I think it's just the, the level of thought um, you know and uh, other projects that again you sell have sold very well f you know as, as patterns of the two little Christmas, Christmas trees, trees over there and again a lovely a different technique clearly but really lovely but the use of felt again just makes it so easy doesn't it You're yeah not having to worry about raw edges or anything along no, those lines no and and because it's an acrylic felt as well then it's reasonably priced yeah you know some of the wool felts can be quite expensive and it makes these little projects affordable for people to make and also to make them for gifts and the gingerbread house has I been especially um mm. popular and that people quite like the idea and maybe maybe for next christmas yeah. i might make one that the roof comes off because most people have been disappointed that the, the roof doesn't come yeah. off their house. <laughs> but I, I was just worried that if the roof came off, then I'd have to fill it full of chocolate. <laughs> And, um, and they oh. might just go before Christmas, you yeah. know what we're like when it gets the chocolate. Well, ex exactly. But it's just, I, I just love the, de again, the detail on that and the use of buttons. And um, while we don't offer that one as a particular kit, what a lot of ladies have had a lot of fun doing is going through the button packs that we sell and customising yeah. their own gingerbread house. Because yeah. there's all sorts of treats and candies and buttons that you didn't know existed that you exactly. can actually You can never have too many buttons. Yeah. So that's really fun. People often ask me where I get my buttons from and I buy so many that um, I can't remember half the time. And clearly I get a lot from you. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it's always good fun. But we do have fun and they're always bringing out new ones. So there's always lots of ideas. But honestly, girl, they are lovely and they've given everyone so much fun. I must just quickly talk about this little one because this is the newest uh, project, isn't it? I'm going to just move this into view here. Move our little mushrooms out of the way here so you can see it. But this is just adorable. Go on, do show me this one. Yeah. Well, I decided I wanted to make a little teacup 
um, for a pin cushion and that. So that's what this is, is your little teacup and you've got little sugar cube pins in the back. And then a little bourbon biscuit that'll hold your needles. Calorie free. Calorie free, <laughs> of course. And then just to finish it off, a little jammy dodger um, tape measure again, if you want to pull the tape. Okay, okay. And then you can just press it's it for the tape to retract brilliant. and that. I really I had fun. For me, mm. the pleasure is in working out how mm. I can make it and how I can make fabric look like a like a teacup. And um, and I really do feel lucky that you take all my work out and share it with the public. And um, and it's really lovely that people share my passion for mm, for do. making little trinkety things. Yeah, it's lovely. Well, well done. It's absolutely beautiful. And keep keep designing. I know yeah. there's a huge following out there that people love your work. So well done. Thank you very much, Sue.